Um, did I talk? I, did, I, did, I don't think I did. So one thing to know is that these the FRQs on these formatives. Um, at this point, you can close your computers, right? Okay, thanks. The FRQs on these formatives are uh, are almost all of them. There's a few that, that aren't, but almost all of them are actual AP FRQ questions. Okay, so this is from the 2003 exam. Okay, usually there's two different FRQs, one for international kids, one for domestic, meaning domestic, meaning U.S. domestic kids, okay? Um, and the one that the international kids take is usually called Form B. So this is the Form B. Um, I'm going to go over this, and I'll pretty much go over all of these. Once in a while, I won't be able to, or once in a while, you want to be able to go back and, like, you know, kind of review an FRQ, an easy way to find an explanation for it is to just open a new tab. If you just typed in 2003 macro free response question FRQ or macro FRQ form B, and then put YouTube after it, there will be a bunch of teachers who will have like put explanations of the uh, question online, okay? Um, and so that's, you know, if you need to do that, you can do that. All right, I'm gonna do it right now. Um, okay, so here we have, so you'll very likely, or at least it's, you know, a good chance that you'll get a question like this as an FRQ. You'll definitely get questions like this as MCQs when you test next week. Okay, so we, what you wanna do here is you wanna create a two by two matrix, right? That's what I would do if I were trying to answer this question. Okay, so you got two countries. Ashna and Luna making food. And machines. Okay, you guys, you guys are going to help me? Remind me your name? Miggy. Miggy. How much food can Ashna make? Boy. Okay, so if Ashna only makes food, uses all its resources to make food, it can make 40 units of food. Wait, oh, we know 30, 30, 30. I was, I was looking at the That's right. <laughs> Thank you, BQ. No, that's what we're here. We're here to help each other, right? Miggy, say thank you, BQ. <laughs> Miggy, say thank you, BQ. Thank you, BQ. There you go. Okay, um, so 30 food and Miggy. Let me make sure you know how to do this, all right? Miggy, how much, how many machines, okay? So Ashna, if it uses all its resources to make machines, could make 10 machines, okay? So it could make 30 food, uh, units of food or 10 machines or some combination where it would make less of each, okay? But it can't like make 30 units of food and 10 machines, right? Because it's using all its resources to make the food, all right? So it's or. Okay, um, and tell me your name. Vani. What? Vani. Vani. How much food could Luna make? Um, 40. 40 if it uses all, all its resources and Name? Lucas. Lucas. How much? How 40. many machines? What? 40. Okay, perfect. Okay. So now you have your, your matrix here. Okay, so on these kinds of questions, on the on these comparative advantage questions, uh, the first, so you, sometimes you're just given this matrix, okay? Um, and in this particular case, you kind of have to make it yourself, okay? Uh, the first, close your computers, please. Thank you. Okay. The first question you need to, so if you're going to take notes, I want you to take notes, but you should be taking notes by hand. All right? Okay. Um, and you may have already done that, right? So you may have already, you don't have to retake notes if you did it at home, right? Okay. But uh, in any case, okay. Um, so the first question you ask yourself is this, is this an input problem or is this an output problem? 
Okay, quickly, like 15 seconds. Is this an input problem or an output problem? Talking to the person you're sitting next to, why? Okay, stop. Alila, is this an input problem or an output problem? Output. That's correct. Why? How do you know that? Because you heard someone else say it. Well, that's, that, that's smart, right? But that's not going to help you on the test, right? So, um, who did you hear say it? Bruce. You heard Bruce say it. Bruce. You think this is an output problem? Yeah. Yeah, because I just said that, right? Why is it an output problem? How do you know? Um, because it's like how much you're making, not how much you're putting into to make it. Okay, that's a good way to say it. So the question you ask yourself is, is this an output problem or an input problem? And then the next question you ask yourself is, what do these numbers represent? So you might even want to write that in your notebook. What do these numbers represent? Do they represent inputs? The stuff you use to make goods and services? Or do they represent outputs, the actual goods and services themselves, the stuff that gets made, right? And so Bruce is right. This is an output, right? When Luna can produce 40 units of food, that's the output. Now, if, if this was like number of hours or number of workers, if you say, if, if maybe the question said, it takes Luna 40 hours to make one unit of food or 40 workers to make one unit of food, then those would be, that, that 40, that number 40, would represent inputs. Okay, but in this case, it represents outputs. So if the number represents outputs, then what you have is an output problem. Okay? Okay, so when you have an output problem, this is how you do it. Okay, you, you remember output over. Okay, O, O, they go together. Okay, and so what you're going to try to do here is calculate the opportunity costs. Right, and so you're going to take this 10. Because it's an output problem, you put it over the 30. And so the opportunity cost of making one unit of food is that you lose one third of a unit of machines okay you take this 30 put it over the 10 the opportunity cost of machines is three units of food take the 40 put it over the 40 opportunity cost is one take this 40 put it over this 40 opportunity cost of one so now you have your opp opportunity costs right the opportunity cost of making one unit of food for ashna is a third of a machine the opportunity cost for Ashna of making a machine is that they have to give up three units of food. Okay, one and one for uh, Luna. Okay, quickly turn to the person you're sitting next to very quickly. Do you have any questions? Ask the person you're sitting next to. No. <laughs> Okay, stop. Any questions? Okay, any questions? Okay, if this were an input problem, so if instead of food and machines, you said hours and number of workers, number of hours and number of workers, then it's an input problem. Instead of output over, you have input into. So like in math, when you say into, it's divided by basically, right? So instead of taking the 30 and putting it over, sorry, instead of taking the 10 and putting it over the 30, you would take the 10 and put it into the 30. So this would be three instead of one third. Okay, and so your opportunity cost would be reversed. And so you can see that as you go on in the question, whether you get things right or wrong depends on these calculations. And so a really crucial thing is being, being able to, in the first place, 
determine whether it's an output problem or an input problem. Okay? If that kind of confuses you, I encourage you to go use that problem set that I showed you earlier in class to kind of make sure you understand that idea. Okay. So here we have the opportunity costs. Okay. Let's start sort of answering the problem now. So which country has an absolute advantage in the production of machines? So let's distinguish between absolute and comparative advantage. Okay. Um, well, who can sort of explain absolute advantage in this context really simply? Tell me your name. Lucas. Lucas, okay. Just which country produces goods more efficiently or produces more? Produces more, right? In this case, pr produces more. Okay, so uh, who can produce more food? Luna. Luna produces 40. Ashna can produce 30 in some given period of time, right? Okay, so therefore we would say Luna has the absolute advantage it can produce more, right? And Luna also has the absolute advantage in terms of producing machines. It can produce 40, while um, Ashna can only produce 10, okay? So the answer here, it, and so just something to understand, yet when they say which country, all you have to say in your answer is the country. So the answer is Luna for A and Luna for B. And this is explain. So when you get this term explain as part, part of an FRQ, okay, you need a, a sentence or two, usually just like one, but maybe two sentences to explain it. The answer here is just to say that Luna can produce more than Ashna in any given period of time. 40 is greater than 30, 40 is greater than 10. That answers the question, okay? Um, now, comparative advantage is different. So I want to give you a way of thinking about this. If you were going to produce rice, you're going to buy a rice farm. And you could buy a rice farm in the United States, say Iowa, or a rice farm of equal size in Thailand, where would you buy your rice farm? Have a quick conversation. Rice, so Thailand and the U.S. Okay, stop. Nia, what did you guys say? For, so where are you going to buy your rice farm? Thailand. Right, because because the, the the climate and the and and, and the uh, and the land in, in in Thailand is much better in terms of how much output per acre or how much output output per hectare you can get than you would in America. You would produce more for every bit of land you had in Thailand than you would in America. Now, in terms of total capacity. If America used all of its resources to make rice, while Thailand used all of its resources to make rice, are you certain who could make more? No. I'm not, right? I could probably look it up, right? I'm, but I'm not, right? I think there's a chance that America could actually make more rice than Thailand, right? If it used all of its resources to do so, right? You know, it could probably, sort of change the land using certain technologies and stuff like that. And you could, you know, maybe even change the, not the weather, but it could change, you know, sort of like, you, know, you could do things in greenhouses and stuff like this, right? It's, it's, it, I think it's possible that America could actually produce more because it has so many more resources than Thailand. If that were true, then we would say that America has an absolute advantage in making rice even though making rice in Thailand is preferable to making rice in America. That makes sense? So America can make more, okay? Now, America's really good, at least in places like, say, Iowa, at making wheat, right? Thailand, not the, the, the land and the weather and the climate in Thailand, not nearly as good for making wheat as it is in Iowa. 
Okay, so if you're gonna make wheat, you would prefer to purchase a farm in Iowa rather than purchase, purchasing a farm somewhere in Thailand. Okay, why? Because so if, if let's say you have a farm in Thailand and you, you reallocate the resources on that farm from making rice to making wheat, that farm's that the soil and the climate and everything's really good for making um, for making rice. And so when you do that, you're going to lose a lot of rice production. But it's not very good for making wheat, right? So you're only going to gain a little bit in terms of wheat production. And so the opportunity cost is huge. You're giving up tons of output in rice. But almost no gaining almost no output in wheat. And so it's much preferable in terms of total output to make your rice in Thailand than to make your rice in Iowa. And the same thing, right? If you have a wheat farm in Iowa and then transform it into a rice farm, you're gonna lose tons of production in wheat, but not gain much in terms of rice. And so the opportunity cost in terms of what you lose versus what you gain is huge. And so we would much prefer that wheat gets made in America because the total output is going to be greater. Right? And so even though America has an absolute advantage in rice, given what, you know, you know, my assumption here, it doesn't have a comparative advantage. It's still better to make it in Thailand than it is to make it in the United States, at least according to this theory. That makes sense? Okay, so that's the difference between absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Now in this problem, like in other problems, it's possible for one country to have an absolute advantage in both. Okay, in this case, Luna. Sometimes it's one and, and, and or the other, like so sometimes Luna might have an advantage, in one, absolute advantage in one, Ashna an absolute advantage in the other. Okay? Um, and sometimes, like in this one, Luna has an absolute advantage in both. In these problems, it's never possible for one country to have a comparative advantage in both. It will be always be the case in these problems that one country has a comparative advantage in one, and what the other country has a comparative advantage in the other, and therefore will specialize in the good in which they have a comparative advantage. So let's move on to that. So C, which country has a comparative advantage in the production of machines? So somebody help me with this. Talk to the person you're sitting next to. What's the answer to C? Okay, can you? What's the answer to C? He said Luna. So it's food, right? Okay. That's uh So you said Luna. So machines. I'm sorry. You're, you're, so you're right. Okay, you're right. So Luna has a comparative advantage in machines, and how do you know that? Because it has a lower opportunity. Because it has a lower opportunity cost. So that's the answer to the question. Luna, because. So when you see explain, it's often like followed by because and then an explanation. And here the explanation is it has a lower opportunity cost. One is less than three. It gives up less. Just like, Tha just like Luna gives up less when it makes machines than Ashton, just like Thailand gives up less when it makes rice than America. Okay, makes sense? Okay. And then therefore, for D, what's the answer? Who has the comparative advantage in food? That's not a question. Oh, it's not. Oh, which, thank you. With trade between these countries, which country will import food? So that means a country that's gonna buy food from the other country. So then here you have to think, which country will specialize in making food, and then the other country is the one that's gonna buy the food. So who's gonna specialize in making food? Ashna. Yeah, Ashna, because it, it has the comparative advantage 
you can see what I do in these problems, right? I calculate the opportunity cost and then I circle the lower one. So when I go back to the question, it's right there for me. I don't have to, I don't have to sort of sort it out, okay? So Ashton will make food, Luna will make machines. Luna will buy the machines, so Luna will be importing from Ashna, okay? Okay, finally, the terms of trade. This, this term or this phrase, terms of trade, is means essentially the same thing as the price. Okay, but the price won't be in dollars, it will be how much would one country pay, say, how, how much would Luna pay to sell some of its machines, or how many machines would Luna have to get in order to want to buy food from Ashna? Okay, so here's, this is, this is probably the most difficult part of this problem, okay? So what you have to think about here is in this world we've now created, Luna makes only machines, they have no food, right? They're specializing in machines. And Ashna makes only food, they have no machines. So for Ashna to get machines, they have to buy from Luna and vice versa for Luna. Okay. Currently, Luna, can, 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 it's making machines, but it can still produce food without trade by making the machines itself, right? And so, and essentially what they have to give up is one machine, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, one unit of the food when they make a machine, right? So that's essentially the price. One machine equals one unit of the food for Luna. Right? So in order for Luna to want to buy, uh, to sell their machines to Ashna, they're going to have to get more than one unit of food. Right? Okay? Currently, they get, they, if, you're, if, if you're making machines in Luna, right, you essentially get a unit of the food for it. That's the price. In order for them to, why would you sell to another country for less than one when you can get one at home? So the price of one machine is going to have to be greater than one food. All right, so let's do it this way. One machine has to be greater than or equal to one food. Okay. Luna, right? can get, um, sorry, for Luna, it's three, right? And so for Luna to want to buy machines from, sorry, for Ashton to want to buy machines from Luna, right? One machine is going to be, have to be less than or equal to three foods, three units of food. And so the price, in order to induce of, of a machine in order in, in, to induce Luna to sell and Ashna to buy is going to have to be between one and three. Right. So the way to remember this, right? So so, in, so you can go back to this and kind of think about it. So it's just, this is hard to get through your head really quickly right now today, right? A simple kind of like when you're doing these problems on a test, to say okay. M. So you put one M here in the middle. And it has to fall between one and three foods. Right? The, the smaller number has to be greater than. The bigger number, it has to be less than. Those are the terms of trade. And if you, you can do it the other way. It means it, the, the, the values are exactly the same. Right? If you want to do one food, you put one food in the middle. Right? It has to be greater than the lower number, one third. Right? And less than the bigger number. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Wouldn't the country selling, like for example, if, if a country is selling the machines, wouldn't they have an, an incentive to not make it equal to one third so that they gain more? They gain like profit? So you don't like the equals part? I'm just wondering. 
We just we just use so good, good question, right? We just use less than or equal to. You can just use if that makes it kind of like simpler. That's fine. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. doesn't, yeah. So that's the range. So the answer here, though, now, now just as a matter of answering the question, they weren't asking for the range, were they? So sometimes we'll ask for the range. Those are the ranges. But we might ask for the actual price. And that's what they do here. Give an example of terms of trade acceptable to both countries. Okay, so here you could say 1M equals 2F or somewhere in that range. Any of those numbers would be right as long as it's inside that range. Okay? Cool. You can stop.